try not to start the video by knocking the bookcase and being killed alive on camera by the falling amount of books that you own. That would be great. Hi lovely people! I know it's been a little while since I've been doing videos regularly, I took like a little break because life got busy. Turns out, if you have a job, full time job, and you're starting a podcast and you have social commitments. It's kind of hard to find the time to vlog. <laughs> but I'm here. And of course, I've bought a lot of books since I last did a haul and since I last started uploading regularly again. So I thought I'd do a quick little sort of haul thing. I know some people don't like hauls because they feel like it's a bit like showy off, like, oh, here's all the things I own. But I quite like hauls because I like getting a sense of what people buy and, you know, you get little insights into cool books that would be cool to check out. So this is a second-hand book haul, which I find a more interesting, sort of, because a second-hand bookshop is just what, do, what have you stumbled upon. And I like that. I like seeing what people have, like, found and discovered and all that sort of thing. So I'm going to do one of those. A quick note. If, like me, you live in the uh, greater Bristol area in the UK, a couple of shop recommendations for you. At the top of Park Street there is a fantastic Oxfam bookshop which is particularly good because all the students from Bristol Uni tend to seem to give their books to it when they leave, so you find some really interesting things there. Additionally, on Gloucester Road there is an Amnesty International bookshop which is also stocked full of great things and with both of those you have the added joy of knowing that you're giving to charity whilst also feeding your book addiction, which is fab. And finally, in the If You Live Closer to Bath, there is the Book Barn, which I have done a video at before. I will link it here, I did a scavenger hunt there. But it is a treasure trove of delight, and all the books are £1. I will start with what is possibly my happiest acquisition, and that is The Fairy Queen by Edmund Spencer. Because look at this book, guys. I started reading The Fairy Queen when I was in my final year of university, and in my final term I suddenly realised that after I graduated I would no longer have access to that library, and so I went into like a mad book reading frenzy, and I started reading The Fairy Queen, and I think I got about two or three books in and then I graduated, so I had to give it back. So I've never finished it. And I know sometimes shops sell it in volumes, but I've never seen all of the volumes in one place. And lo and behold, when I was perusing in Amnesty, I found this lovely thing. So this is all of the Fairy Queen books in one. I'm really excited to actually finish it and know what happens. It's a really interesting, fantastical tale. I kind of really love the language. It's very antiquated in comparison to obviously how we write now, because it is from a while ago. But I love the language he uses, actually. I think it's fantastic to read aloud to yourself, although it is a bit of a commitment to do that. Following on from that, another thing which I'm extremely excited to have found is The Heart Goes Last by Margaret Atwood. I love Margaret Atwood anyway, I've talked about her on this channel a bit, I'm hoping to do a couple more like in-depth videos on her as well because I have a lot of things to say about her writing. I actually did an entire module on her when I was at university and I haven't read any of her work for fun since then, so I've been keeping my eyes peeled for something of hers so I can dip back in. So this seems really interesting. It's about a couple who, they're homeless, they're living on the streets, in their car I think, and then they're contacted by these, I don't know if it's an agency, if it's people or something, and essentially the deal is they can live in this sort of beautiful suburbia and they have this house and all this sort of stuff, but every second month they have to give up their freedom and they have to, I assume, spend, I think, the entire month in prison? and then a, two, another couple takes their place for that month. So I assume it's a month in suburbia or a month in prison and they alternate. And from the blurb, I gather that they start to become fascinated with the couple that is, takes their place while they're in jail. And I think it's all about ideas of freedom and that sort of thing. And I don't really know much more than that, but I'm very excited to find out. I think most of my Atwood knowledge is of her older work, but I did really enjoy the Oryx and Crake trilogy that she released fairly recently, so I'm quite looking forward to this, to 
to see if see what it's like really another book that i picked up is the magic toy shop by angela carter i mentioned angela carter in my book on the haul video that i posted fairly recently so i actually gave away my copy of the passion of new eve to a charity shop because i objectively thought it was good but I didn't really connect with it. I felt there was a slight disconnect between me and the book emotionally so whilst I could sort of get my head into analysing it I also didn't really feel like I had that strong feelings towards it but my friend who is a massive Angela Carter fan said that she had a similar sort of experience but that she did really enjoy some of her other novels so I thought, have a second go at reading a full-length novel rather than short stories. So I picked up The Magic Toy Shop. I do really like magical realism. This has a whole thing to do with puppets that I think might be coming to life, which I think if this was a film would horrify me because that China dolls and stuff creeped me out a little bit, so I don't... Mm, ugh. But hopefully because it's a book, I'll be okay. I don't know, but... I'm excited to give her another shot, and we'll see. Continuing on the Angela Carter theme, I also picked up Wayward Girls and Wicked Women, which is a collection of short stories. It's edited and collated by Angela Carter, but it's full of other writers, which just seems really exciting to me. The main story I'm excited to read is there's one by... Juna Barnes, I think I've said that right, the, her first name is spelt D-J-U-N-A, if I've pronounced it wrong please do let me know, but she is someone who I've heard a lot about and I've been interested in exploring, I just haven't quite got there yet, so I'm particularly interested to read her story. I don't really know the other people who've contributed to this a lot, but I think this should be a good introduction to them and to their writing. It also has the fantastic thing I love when you get a second hand book and people have written in it previously. So, and especially based on what the title is. So, someone's gone, here's hoping that you do all these evil and naughty deeds in your life, love Joe. I love Joe. And to the wildest, wickedest women I know in Hackney, love Robin. And that fills my heart with such warmth and joy, just to get that little glimpse into these people's lives. So, I'm already endeared to it. I don't know what it's going to be like, but I like it. A book that I've picked up that I know very little about is The Universe vs Alex Woods. This is one that I've heard about via booktube, but I've never listened to an actual review of it because I don't want spoilers. So I really don't know a lot about it. I think it's about, obviously, Alex Woods. I think he's a he? Yes, Alex Woods is a boy. He seems to strike up some form of friendship with an older widower and it's sort of about that. I don't really know. I'm probably going to do an in-depth review of it once I've read it and then I'll be able to expand upon this very shoddy description. But I've heard a lot of hype about it and that's pretty much why I picked it up just based on general booktube vibes. We'll see if it pays off. The penultimate book I'm going to talk about is The Book of Lost Things by John Connolly. I'm 80% sure that this is somehow related to fairies and that makes me very excited. I really like fairy stories. I really like modern revisiting of fairy stories. I like that whole idea of probably more fae than fairy when they're very tricky and wily and they don't obey the laws of man and it's a separate sort of moral code and is there even a moral code and that sort of thing so books like jonathan strange and mr norrell i really loved the fae in that i also really liked um the split world series that is all about fae in that interesting way and i feel like this is going to be of a similar vein to the split world series so i'm quite excited to explore it i haven't really read the blurb because i don't want to spoil it for myself but it's one, another one that I've heard a lot of good things about on booktube, so I'm really, really excited to check this out. And I'm just thrilled, really, in general. Just books, guys. So exciting. And the final book in this little video is The Charioteer by Mary Reno. Hopefully, I will have already posted my Mary Reno The Praise Singer review by now, so you'll know that I'm very fond of her already, and I've been meaning to explore her for a while. So I, I've actually picked this up after I've read that because I spotted it in a second-hand bookshop and I dived on it. 
Um, this isn't actually set in ancient times. I think this is set in, I'm going to say World War II, not World War I. Mary Renault was alive during World War II, so I don't know if she'll have set this in World War I or in World War II. I don't know if that might have been too close history or if she draws upon life experience. I'll find out. But it's essentially a homosexual love story between two men and it takes place in a hospital for wounded soldiers. That is, again, all I really know about it. But it has the utterly fabulous, it has another little dedication in the front. And it says, To John with love, Lawrence, 13th of May, 1996. I hope this means as much to you as it did to me. And that little glimpse into the life of John and Lawrence made me feel really touched because it's clearly someone who's given this book as a gift to a loved one and whenever I see that in secondhand books it makes me so happy to get a sense of the past of this book. It's one of my favourite things about buying secondhand books is being able to tell that they have a history to them. So I'm really excited to have found this anyway because of Mary Renault. I'm really excited to have found this edition because of the lovely little writing in it and I'm really excited to read it and prod probably review it and give you guys my thoughts on it. This was just a little tiny snippet collection of some of the books that I have bought since I last did a haul, which has been months, so I don't feel so bad about how many of them there are, because spoiler alert, there's a lot more books that I've also bought that will be in other hauls, probably being posted soon, because, let's be honest, it's I don't think I've posted a book haul in 2016, and that's been months of book buying, so <laughs> there'll be a couple more of these to come, I think. But if you've read any of these, I'd really love to hear your thoughts on them. Or if there's any in particular that you're interested in reading and would like me to review specifically after I've read them, then do let me know and I'll try and prioritise them in my reading. Or if you've just bought any good books recently, or second-hand books with little... Oh, yes! Oh, if you've bought any second-hand books that have delightful little dedications written in them, tell me that, because that makes me really excited. So yes, I hope you're having a super-duper fantastic lovely day. And I'm sending you many happy vibes and book buying vibes. I don't know if that's a thing, but I'm sending them. And I'll see you soon for another, potentially a haul. <laughs> so many books, guys. I have 